Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. Today we're going to be working on four DIY winter projects using Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started. For this first one, I'm going to use this home decor piece and I'm just going to take the backing off, the little insert and the glass piece. And then I'm going to be using Debbie's Design Diary DIY chalk paint in White Swan and a pouncy brush. And I'm just going to pounce the paint on onto the inner portion of that insert as well as along the outside of the frame, of course. And by pouncing it on, it just gives it some really great texture versus just painting it with a paintbrush. I'll work a little bit on the outside frame here, and then I'll show you what it looks like up close. See, I just love the texture it gives. I also am gonna be using these Dollar Tree Christmas snowflakes. I'm gonna do the same technique with the same paint and the pouncy brush front and back. Also have a couple of these little snowflakes, painted those as well. Now we're going to make a piece for the back. I cut a piece of scrapbook paper out to fit the back and I sewed around the edges and now I'm gluing it on using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. And now we're going to go ahead and get the writing off. Now I've found it's easiest to use alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and you let it soak on there. You put a ton of it on and let it soak so it's almost soupy. And then you can just rub it off like you're seeing here, but this does take a little bit. But since it's so soupy and it's so for probably about four or five minutes it comes off really easy with the razor blade and then you just wipe off the excess now be careful when you use the razor blade please now I have made a uh, vinyl quote here using my Cricut Explore air machine and I'm just going to put this on the glass and the fonts I used were um let me think let me think oh JMH typewriter and Corona and I'm putting into the lower right corner, just kind of like the original quote was. Now I have a couple of eyelet screws here and I'm going to screw them into the plastic, one on the right side near the top and one on the left uh, top edge. They do stick out a little bit as you can see here, but that's okay because the insert still fits fine. There's plenty of room in there. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and just put a great big dollop of glue on both ends since we're just kind of screwing into plastic and there's a big overhang of the screw left just so that it stays in place and doesn't pull right back out. Now we're gonna make some little snowballs. If you don't have these left over from Christmas, these little glitter snowballs, you can use. There's this size of uh, foam balls, you know, from Dollar Tree, or this bigger size if you cut it in half and then in half again, these styrofoam balls, and you just squeeze it, kind of roll it into a little ball. It'll make a shape just perfectly because the styrofoam is soft enough to do this with. We learned this technique in my last video, but of course I will show this again. I have got a salt glitter mixture here. And you could, I use kosher salt. I like the texture of kosher salt. You could use Epsom salts from Dollar Tree, but I'm gonna show you the difference here in the texture. See how big the Epsom salt's on the left, the kosher's on the right. And then what you do is I add this big size glitter I get from Walmart, it's like 96 cents a tube. I add it in there and this really fine glitter from Dollar Tree. And you just add enough glitter so to the salt, there's no rhyme or reason until you start to see the glitter show through the salt as you see here. Then I take Mod Podge and here's the foam ball we made. We'll use this to make it work. Pouncy brush and I pounce the Mod Podge all over it, all over the styrofoam ball here and then I'm gonna roll it into the salt and glitter mixture. And then I like to double dip. So once this is dry, I you know wait a few minutes, I go back in and I do the same technique over again. Mod Podge again, back into the glitter mixture, glitter salt mixture, and then we have our cute little snowball. And it fits in here just, so, just fine, the one we made. I made like 12 here, but I only end up using about 10. So we're gonna go ahead and fit our glass in here and our little insert that goes back into the frame. I painted the outside part of the insert, but you don't really need to. And then I actually just throw a little bit of that salt glitter mixture right inside to kind of act like loose snow. We're gonna take our snowflake and I glue it to the upper left corner of our little back piece here. I slide that back in. I've got these wood beads from Walmart and the snowflakes I painted earlier and this little wood sticker from Dollar Tree and some twine from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna punch a little hole into my wood sticker using my crop -a dial And then I'm gonna, you know, 
uh, go ahead and thread all these on. I thread the mitten on five of the little beads and a snowflake. Then I go five more beads and a snowflake and five more beads. And you could do whatever, you know, fashion you want to or however many you want to on here. That was just kind of my thing of, you know, how many of each. So 15 beads, two snowflakes, and a wood mitten. And then what we're going to do, this is what it looks like, of course, is we're going to go ahead and double knot it to the eyelet screw on the right side of our frame. Kind of cut off that excess, double knot it onto the upper left side of the frame where the other eyelet is. And then once this is on, this project is complete. If you're new to my channel, again, my name is Linda and I've been a crafter for years and love to do all sorts of DIY home decor crafts from farmhouse to rustic to primitive to paper crafts and everything in between. I like to post videos once a week, so go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. Also, I'm on Instagram. Pop on over and say hi. I'll have the link in the description box for you. And if you're looking for more inspiration, I do have a Facebook group. Come on by. Again, the link will be in the description box and come join that group. I hope to see you there. For now, let's get on to project number two. So for this project, I've got this, uh, you know, basket from Dollar Tree and I have these dog toenail clippers they work perfect again got those from Dollar Tree as well and my basket is just a little bit too tall so I'm just cutting off about an inch of it all the way around and it gives it a little bit more of a rustic look as well I kind of partially started it so you didn't have to watch me do the whole thing but here's our basket cut off the top I'm going to throw it out not going to save it and now I'm going to go ahead and start painting it again. I'm going to use this Debbie's Design Diary chalk paint. And I wanted it a little bit more chunky. So what I did is I have the sand from Dollar Tree. I added in as much as I wanted to make it nice and textured. And with a pouncy brush again, it gets all over. You can see it on my hands. And I'm just pouncing it inside and out all over the basket. And it just gives it kind of a nice snowy texture. Now I'm using all these different sizes of styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree, small, medium, large. I've done the glitter, salt glitter process on them just like we did on the first project. You can see them all here. I think I used like oh, two packages of this large, two packages of this small, and one package of the medium. And I'm going to be using this chalkboard frame as well. I pulled the little easel part off the back and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stain the wood front and back. I used a brown paint and watered it down, painting it on and brushing it off. But later I decided I don't like the brown so I kind of paint over it with the gray and I'll show you that in a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like because I do that off camera. But here's the process of this part anyway because you know we change our minds while we're crafting, right? So originally I had printed off the quote I wanted was going to use carbon paper, trace it on, and then use paint markers. But then I decided I wanted to make my own stencil. So use my Cricut machine. Here's my stencil. I'm going to go in with the pouncy brush. Did a little stenciling on the heart as well. And I'm going to use a marker here later. I'm going to make some dash lines around my frame just like on the heart. Going in with my pouncy brush, really thin, thin coat, and I'm just pouncing it on and off in the areas. Really, really thin. You can almost see the chalkboard through it. It will bleed a little bit on this because of the texture of the chalkboard, but I kind of like that on this because of how rustic it makes it look. So once I finish the sign, I'll move over onto the little heart from Dollar Tree. And that heart's going to have like my price here because, you know, snowballs are for sale here. So I'm doing the same process here. Once it's all dry, here's where I go and do the Dixie Belle chalk paint in Hurricane Gray and I sand around the edges. I just do normal painting, sand around the edges. Once my stencil's dry, I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and then pull out all the little inserts of my letters, of course. But again, using printing it off on your computer, and I use the uh, Moonflower font for this, and using carbon paper, you could trace it on and use the markers just like I'm doing here to make the dash lines. It works perfectly great. 
but I just wanted that little more texture with the paint. And when I do these dashed lines here, I let it dry a little bit and I go over it two or three more times. Now I've got this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. It's got wire on it. I cut the wire off just like you see here and I pull on the threads to kind of distress the edges. And I cut enough to fit around the basket, so however big your basket is. And then I take another piece and cut enough to make a nice little bow here. So we'll make the bow first and then we'll go around the basket. Now as I'm going around the basket, this is kind of a burlapy type ribbon. Um, and I add just enough glue that you don't really see it through the inside. But as I'm going around, I'm pulling on it really tight and kind of stretching that ribbon so that it doesn't leave a bunch of gathers going around the basket. It lays on the basket nice and flat. Once that's on, I'm going to glue my little bow right on top there at the seam. I'm going to add a little snowflake here. Painted a little snowflake, little Dollar Tree snowflake. And I have a tiny little wood heart here that I painted as well in the gray paint. Add that to the center of the snowflake to kind of hide that hole of the snowflake. Again, another little wood mitten here. I kind of whitewashed it with some white paint. And I'm going to glue it to kind of cover the hole on the heart and add a little black and white checked bow. And then this heart's going to be seen from the other side, and I don't want that raw to be seen. So I just traced it onto some gray cardstock, sewed around the edges. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue it on here. Just kind of gluing half of it because I want it to kind of hang off the sign a little bit. Just so it's kind of rustic and cute. Going to line our snowballs in here. Now when I line these in, I line a couple of medium snowballs. I lay them right next to each other so the sign can set right on top. And for now, I am just laying all these in here. But I do go back in once I'm done with this showing you. And I glue all the balls to the basket to each other. I glue the frame in everything. But once everything's laying in where I want it, glued down, this project is complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, you're gonna need more of these snowflakes. You're gonna need six of them. And we're going to paint front and back. I'm using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth because it's kind of a cream shade. Again, using my pouncy brush, I will pounce it on. And then once I pounce it on one coat, I use my heat tool and I heat set it. And then I go in again and I pounce it on again, one more coat. Once I get that on, I heat set again, and I let the heat set it stay on a little long, and it gives me this great texture. Front and back, both sides, all snick snowflakes. Now I've got this off-white yarn from Dollar Tree. I think I used two skeins and made some snowballs here. This is the uh, pom-pom maker that I used to make the snowballs with. I got it in a store. It came with three sizes here. I used the large size and the medium size large size for five pom-poms this is how easy it is i've done one side for you. you literally take your yarn and you wrap it around and you keep wrapping it around this is the other half of the pom-pom maker wrap 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 until i go until i fill that little center space all the way down to the edge keep wrapping and you'll need five of these yes five of these pom-poms you can see how full it is right in that center once i get it to there i go ahead and cut this off so easy i made all of these five pom-poms i mean i think i made one pom-pom about every five minutes you cut it off and then you take it and slide this piece here right into the center just like this see you slide them both right in nice and easy. I'll have a link at Amazon for you in case you want to find these. You cut off about a 12 inch piece of yarn and see where the slit is on both sides of these. Take some nice sharp scissors and you cut and don't worry it won't come apart because it's kind of locked in a little bit. Cut right through the center in that slit. 
I just kind of want to show you this. There's all sorts of tutorials on YouTube if you want to like make your own pom-pom maker. Kind of the same premise, but this is so much easier. You take this yarn and you go right through the center of those slits all the way around, just like I'm doing here, and you pull it through nice and tight. Pops through. Go to the other side, and I pull it nice, nice and tight. Make a double knot. You want a nice long piece of yarn here because we want to leave that long piece on there. And then you just open these up and you pull them off and you have our pom-pom, AKA snowball. Of course, it's not trimmed up. We have to trim it up, but there it is made nice and easy. I think two skeins got me what I wanted. So five pom-poms for the big one and then two little littler pom-poms for the medium one. So let's trim it up. Hold on to your length, your little uh, long threads there, and you just go with some scissors and just, I kind of flatten it out on one side. I trim it and then I flatten it in the other direction, trim it, and it's actually kind of calming to sit and trim these up. I don't know what it is, but I just love it. But I'll show you the difference here of what it looks like. I'm just trimming the smaller ones because it's quicker to show you here on video. And if I could think of something to do with all those little pieces I cut off, I would surely save them, but I did not, of course. Trim it up in just a nice round ball shape. Again, you still have your long pieces. We're going to need this to tie on to our project. So here's what our pom-pom looks like, all trimmed up. So we have our five pom-poms, our six snowflakes. I've got a couple of mini ornament tags here. You're going to need either white twine or you can use your yarn. This is going to be our main rope of our garland. I've got like a brown and white twine here that I'm going to use for my, my, my main rope. And then you're going to need some brown twine. I've got a couple of different ribbons here couple of different plaid ribbons, a little brown ribbon here, and I'm also going to use some pom-pom trim as part of my main rope on my garland. My main garland rope's about five feet long. I put the pom-pom trim and the twine together and tied two loops at the end, and then I folded it in half and I marked it the center with green tape, and then I measured, I laid everything out and measured where I wanted all my pieces to be. So we're going to start in the center of our garland and I'm taking a white snowball here. It's going to be our main piece and I'm going to tie it right around both loops, leaving a little space between the main rope of the garland and the snowball. Don't worry, we'll go in and tie that here in just a second as you see using a long piece of twine. I think it was about 18 inches or so. I'm tying it right up against the rope of the garland and tying a bow around the yarn on the snowball so it'll keep the snowball in place. We'll cut those long ends off a little bit later. And basically we're just going to kind of alternate snowball and snowflake, snowball and snowflake. Um, except for the two cute little mini wood tag ornaments that I want to use. So when we're starting here, I started in the center with the snowball. Now I'm tying in a snowflake, leaving it a little bit dangling just like I did the snowball, but not as much, but a little bit, because I kind of want the end of the snowflake and end of the snowball to be kind of level. The next spot would be the mini ornament, but I'm going to skip it for now, okay? We're going to go in with the snowball next. So we're kind of skipping that one little green tape marker there. I'm going to go ahead and add in our alternating snowball and snowflakes first. Kind of having a little hard time getting my <laughs> tape off here. Get that off. There we go. I'm going to tie in our snowball here. And I want to leave a little space like I'm doing here because I want my uh, you know, ornaments here to kind of have a little bit of movement, but you could tie them right up against the main rope of your garland if you want to. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, yep, tie the twine on this one. Adding a nice little bow here giving it texture and using the brown twine here for the bows kind of matches my brown and white twine 
you know, on the main rope of my garland. Now here I'll cut off the excess just so you can see, but you can see I leave about an inch, inch and a half of excess on there because it just adds more texture. I'll go ahead and place my one little mini ornament here. You don't have to add these ornaments here if you don't have them. I just bought a bunch of them at Christmas time because I, you know, they're really cute sayings. You can make your own little tag to hang here, or if you want, just alternate pom-poms and snowflakes. You don't even need the tag. It would look super cute just with pom-poms and snowflakes. It's a winter garland, right? Just kind of coming back and forth here, alternating one and then the other. I'm just kind of moving slow here so you can kind of see how I'm doing this side and then we'll just mirror it on the other side completely easy. And I double and kind of triple knot these. And go ahead and tie the snowballs in place with our twine again. Cut off that excess, leave that little little bit there hanging at the top. Come in with our last snowflake here tie that into place and then we'll go ahead and kind of start adding our ribbons onto our snowflakes because we want them to be nice and secure as well using a couple of the plaid ribbons here and I tie it kind of right around the main rope and the knot of the twine where I you know tied the snowflake onto that main rope here's a little bit of that light brown ribbon I'm tying again around the main rope and kind of around the knot of the twine that I tied the tag on with couple of knots here, cut off the excess of all my little pieces because you can see how that snowflake moves so tying this fabric right around this, you can use fabric too, tying the ribbon right around that, you can use little pieces of fabric if you don't have ribbon. Here's our whole side here alternating back to our middle with our snowflake and we're just going to mirror it just like I said earlier on this left side. going in. Next is our little tag. Again, you could leave the little tag out. That's perfectly fine. You know, you don't want to rush out and have to buy stuff you don't need. I mean, it is cute, but again, like I said, you can make your own or leave it out. And, you know, if you don't even have snowflakes and you just wanted to do a whole garland of pom-poms would look super cute. Nothing but pom-poms. How cute would that be? And tying them on with little twine bows would be so cute. You know, use what you have in your supply. And I kind of liked how I went with kind of a cream shade on this garland a little bit, just so it kind of gives it more of a warm winter look. Moving down the line here, I think we're on to the last snowball here, and then we have one more snowflake. There we are, last little bit. And then we'll go back through and we'll tie on any twine around our snowflake. We'll tie on our ribbons onto, um, sorry, backwards, tie on our twine to our snowballs, tie our ribbons onto our snowflakes. It's hard to keep it all straight between snowballs and snowflakes. Super cute. All right, tying our ribbons on. Cutting off our little excess. Got that all set. Going on with our twine bows on our snowballs. And then we'll go in and do our larger bows on the end where our loops are on our garlands. And I think I started with about 24 inches of uh, ribbon for the bows on the end. I'm going to do one off camera, I add the snowball to the center, and then I'll show you how to do the other one real easy. Just I tie the bow right over the knot where I made the loop on the main rope of the garland, and then I take the snowball and I tie it right around the center portion of the bow, knot it a couple times, and this project is complete.
Let's move on to our last project, number four. So for this project, I'm using a topiary frame from Dollar Tree. I pull it apart, take the largest of the frame, spray paint it white, and then I make 15 large pom-poms and one small pom-pom for this project. Now, if you don't have these topiary frames at Dollar Tree, you can use the normal wreath frame, but keep in mind, you might have to make a few more pom-poms to cover it. So here's how I put the pom-poms on this frame. Using my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, I'll show you a couple here. Put your long strings out to the side, add a line of glue through the center of your pom-pom, put it right up against that frame, Go ahead and then tie your long strings. I do like three little knots here. And then I take the pom-pom, I squish it around the frame. And then I take those long strings and I cut off the excess. We'll do that one more time. Spread your pom-pom apart. Lay your long strings out to the side. Add your line of glue up against that frame and kind of squish it against the other pom-pom. Tie your knots. Squish your pom-pom around the frame and then cut off that excess string. Just like that. Easy, super cute, super cute. I'm gonna go ahead, the way I do this is I go ahead and I like to lay my pom-poms all the way around my frame first. And you can see because I use this topiary frame, it has those long wires kind of sticking out the center on both sides in the middle. I cut those off off camera just using some wire cutters. But you could leave them on if your pom-poms are big enough, you would not maybe not see them. So, you know, your choice. But just kind of wanted to show you how I put this together. It's a little easier for me to kind of get everything into place because since I do kind of squish the pom-poms together, it's easier to kind of lay them in place and squish them together first and then go along and glue them. And you'll kind of be able to see that here in just a minute because you could have actually used one less pom-pom, but I wanted it a little bit fuller. So kind of move them around here and see, adding one more even. So now you know why I kind of laid them in place first and squish them together. And then of course, do the gluing process. And once that's all done, we'll flip it over. We'll see what it looks like. I glue it all off camera for you. Here's what it looks like. So I've got this ribbon, I'm using two of them, get it from Craft Outlet, I'll have the links down below for you. I cut the wire off both ribbons because they are wire edge. This first one I just make a normal bow and wrap some wire around it, leaving the wire a little bit long. We're going to need that later to wrap that around the wire frame of the wreath. Then this next one, I go ahead and I loop it back and forth three times, and then the wire that I used or that I cut off of this wired edged ribbon, I use that to tie this bow together in place. Wrap it around, tie it, take the pom-pom through the center of that, tie it in place, kind of cut off the excess strings, and then the wire that's left on originally on here that we used at first to tie our ribbon together, we take this and wrap it to the other bow cut off the excess, and then we use the original wire here and we put it right between the two pom-poms, wire it to the frame, and this project is complete. I really hope you enjoyed the projects we did today using Dollar Tree supplies. I think they all are so warm and wintry and cute. I love them. But leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up, and remember if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video from me. I'll have a couple of videos pop up here in just a minute in case you're interested and you missed those. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!